it's Adam here for PC Monitors, and in this video I'm going to be taking a look at the BenQ EX3210U's OSD on-screen display menu system. The OSD is controlled by buttons and a joystick underneath the bottom bezel. Just to the right of centre, there's also a dedicated IR remote, which I'll go through shortly. But just concentrating on the buttons first, you can see there are two little pressable buttons there. There's a joystick and there's a power button. And the power LED glows a cool white colour, which you can't really see from a normal viewing position. It sometimes casts a little bit of a pool of light onto your desk or onto the stand, but it's not super visible from a normal viewing position. Cool white when the monitor's on, and it is a fairly deep orange colour when it enters a low power state, so it goes into standby. You can disable the power LED in the OSD if you prefer. If you press the first button, it controls the integrated microphone of the monitor. Initially, it won't do that. It's actually really a button to mute the microphone. So if you enter the main menu system by pressing the joystick in, then going to menu, or by pressing the appropriate buttons on the remote, which I'll come on to shortly, you then go to audio, microphone, and you have to press turn on. You'll then see a little indicator light up there green that means the microphone's on you can use it to record you can then use that shortcut key to mute the microphone so it glows red if the microphone's muted there are a few other options related to the microphone in the main menu system so there's the option to turn it on or off the sensitivity setting i found the default seven fine polar pattern, private or omnidirectional. So private mode will mainly capture in front of the microphone, whereas omnidirectional will capture in a wider field. So it might capture more ambient sound. There's also a noise cancellation function and set that to various different levels, depending on the level of noise cancellation you want. So you can tweak all of this to your liking. I'm really not a microphone reviewer or an audio reviewer in general. I did test the microphone briefly. It worked. Um, I can confirm it worked. I wouldn't say the sound quality was particularly great, to be honest, but it wasn't as good as, for example, the microphone I used to record these videos with. But it will do the job if you need to use it, so it's a nice little addition, really. An important thing to be aware of with the microphone, you do need a USB cable connected. So I've got the USB upstream cable connected to the Type B port of the monitor. That's the sort of square-shaped one. You do have to have the monitor connected up via USB to actually use the microphone. The second button that allows you to quickly cycle the inputs used by the monitor. If they're greyed out, it's because you don't have anything connected to them. I've only got DisplayPort DP used at the moment. There's then the joystick. If you twiddle that up or down, you can quickly change the volume of the integrated speakers or anything connected to the 3.5mm headphone jack if you're using that. If you press the joystick in or twiddle it left or right, it gets up this little quick menu and you can customize this quick menu. And that's found in the quick menu section of the OSD. So the standard game and cinema. Now, these relate to scenarios which you can use on the monitor. It is an important concept to understand with this monitor, otherwise it can be very confusing if you don't. It's not really important that you use the scenarios, but you do have that option if you wish to. On the input menu in the OSD, there is the scenario option. You can turn that on or off. I don't really care for these, so I just have them turned off. But what these do is they apply a different audio setting a different colour mode by default, but you can change both of these things according to your taste and it'll be associated with that particular scenario. So it's currently running the game scenario. You can see it has colour mode set to RPG, audio mode, FPS. You can also customise the quick menu according to the scenario, so the standard game and cinema. If you're not using scenarios as I wasn't before, then standard is what it uses here for everything. And there's a cinema scenario by default that uses cinema HDRI. I'll come on to that shortly, but it looks really just wrong. And there's audio mode set to cinema. Again, you can change this if you want, but I'm perfectly happy to just switch that feature off and that will set my quick menu to standard. So you can customize this. The first options there in the quick menu, it's always scenario and color mode, they're grayed out. So just quickly, if you're using scenarios, I've just had to re-enable this. You can cycle between the scenarios with this quick menu very easily. And then there's color mode. So they're the first two options. You can't change them. That's always what will be shown. If, however, you have the scenario feature disabled, then I go on to the quick menu. Because I've disabled scenarios, you can't change that, but you can change the color mode as usual. But there are other options available for the third, fourth, and fifth feature in the quick menu. You can set that to things like brightness, you can have it change the light tuner feature, the black equalizer feature. Now, these particular features, light tuner and black equalizer, as I'll come on to, different presets have one 
of these available. You don't control both at the same time. They basically do the same thing, but just different presets have a different feature for this. Color vibrance, again, I'll come on to that when I get to it in the main menu system. AMA, and that's only grayed out because I've got that already selected in my quick menu for the fourth option there. Contrast, sharpness, audio mode, volume, low blue light. Again, that's grayed out because I've already got that selected for another feature of the quick menu and blur reduction. So you can see how I've got it set up now. I can change color vibrance, AMA, advanced motion acceleration and low blue light. Also be aware that this monitor does save settings according to input. So for display port, for each HDMI port, you'll have a different set of settings. So you can customize things for different systems if you want, or you can just have things set up the same way, but you will have to set things up twice or multiple times if you're doing that. That's independent of whether you're using Scenario or not. So I'll now move on to the OSD remote. That's this little thing here. So the little wheel there and OK, that's the same as the joystick, has the same functionality as the joystick, so enter by pressing it in and the directional movement within the menu system. The top left button there is the power button. There's a source select button. There's HDRI, I should also mention there's an HDRI button there, the physical button. I'll show you that very shortly. There's also game mode, which just cycles through different game modes if you wish to use them. So it doesn't give you the full preset options, just some of the sort of gaming related presets, which I wouldn't recommend using, but I'll come on to this shortly anyway. I'd like to go back to my custom setting. Thanks very much, BenQ. There's a brightness button, little light bulb icon. Sorry, I've got the um, monitor quite close to the controller there, so I need to angle it because it's infrared towards the sensor, which is in the middle of the screen. Generally, when you're using it from an all viewing position, it, the remote gives you quite a lot of freedom as to where it is in relation to the monitor. You can be quite far back to the left, to the right, up or down, whatever, and it will generally pick it up. But if it's very close to the screen as it is now, it doesn't always work, but that just allows you to quickly adjust the brightness. There's then menu and that'll just bring up the quick menu. If I scroll up, I can then select menu to get into the actual main OSD menu. And then the remaining functions are related to the audio or the speakers. So there's an equalizer button, which allows you to change the audio mode. FPS, RCG, SPG, cinema, pop slash live. This is just according to your preferences. I will say with the integrated speakers, I really explore them more in the features and aesthetics section of the written review, but the speakers are quite good actually. As far as integrated monitor speakers go, they're certainly pretty good. But you just select this according to your own preferences and it depends on those preferences and your acoustic environment, all of that. I like pop slash live. Then there is an option to, to mute the integrated speakers and decrease or increase the volume. So decrease and increase. Moving swiftly onwards to the main menu system, at least the features I haven't talked about. So input, which I've gone through, quick menu I've gone through, color mode. So these are the presets of the monitor, game HDRI, cinema HDRI and display HDR. So if you press the HDRI button on the remote or here, you can see you can quickly cycle through these as well. I'm using an SDR signal at the moment, standard dynamic range, so I don't have HDR active. So these are just sort of emulation settings, if you like. Don't think of these as HDR in any way. It's not using an HDR signal right now. So it's just a filter. It upsets the image. I'm not gonna go through this in too much detail and it's difficult to appreciate this in the video, but things look very con contrasty. It doesn't actually increase the contrast, but that's just because of the gamma enhancements that are made. Some elements are oversaturated as well. The shade variety is not right. Things are just off. You might like how this looks and it's fine if you do, feel free to use them. The ones with I at the end, so Game HDRI and Cinema HDRI, they also use the light sensor of the monitor and they will make adjustments based on the ambient lighting in the room as well as the image itself. What I would say though is that, at least with my unit, it didn't make dramatic adjustments based on the room lighting, certainly in terms of brightness and I explore this more in the written review. And actually, I really explore it more with HDR active. But from my brief testing with SDR using these settings, it's the same kind of thing. It doesn't really make dramatic adjustments. Another thing to be aware of is that there is a sensor sensitivity setting, and this didn't really change things too much in my case, even if I ramped this all the way up. You'll find that in the eye care section of the menu if you've got one of the HDRI settings active. So BI plus light meter, that will show a little icon on the screen when the sensor changes brightness based on the room lighting. 
So for some reason it seems to be deciding it wants to be at maximum brightness at the moment, even though my room is moderately bright, but it's not particularly bright. I've actually dimmed it down a bit so I can show you the screen rather than everything else. And there's the sensor sensitivity setting. If you're finding it's not making adjustments enough, then you can increase that. If it's making too many adjustments with just slight changes in your room lighting, you can decrease that. But as I said on my unit, it didn't seem to do an awful lot in terms of its adjustments either way. Also be aware that if you're using the HDRI settings, then the settings you can actually manually adjust are greatly restricted. So you can't change things like color vibrance, you can't change brightness or contrast. You can adjust the light tuner. For some reason it's set to minus six by default. That's part of why it looks so weird and contrasty, as I said. Strange gamma setup there. BI plus, you can use that without HDRI being active. You can use that independently, but if I turn this off, it will use all of the HDRI stuff I've just talked about with a sort of messed up filter, but it won't apply any changes based on what the light sensor is seeing. And it shouldn't adjust based on the image either. I'm just gonna switch on over to HDR. So I'm gonna enable HDR in Windows. And these settings are distinctly different. Again, they're explored in the written review. Display HDR is definitely my preferred setting for HDR on this monitor. I don't like the light sensor interfering with things. It really doesn't make sense. And for changes to be made based on the image, which just goes against the HDR parameters, doesn't make any sense either. HDR will look its best on this monitor with display HDR, or most accurate, I should say. If you prefer how it looks with a different setting under HDR, fine, feel free to use that. I won't hold it against you, at least not publicly. And again, be aware that there's great restriction on what you can actually change under HDR. So you can change the sharpness, but that's pretty much it. There's also a backlight control setting if you're using display HDR, which enables the local dimming on the monitor. And that is explored in the review. Reset color, which will reset this particular part of the menu to the factory defaults. Just gonna switch back over to SDR now. I'm just running Battlefield 5 for a change of scene. I know you can't see the entire screen, but that doesn't really matter. I'm just going to show you the remaining presets now. So there's an FPS mode. This gives you access to the black equalizer setting. So if you increase this, it will lift the dark shades up. It'll mainly focus on the dark areas without upsetting the brighter shades so much. But you might be able to see even in the video that it does actually lift some of the medium or medium to dark shades up as well. So it does sort of give a bit of a flooded look to the image. But the main thing it's designed to do is increase your visibility in dark areas to give you a competitive edge. And it does that quite well, so I can see the details within the canoes more clearly with this ramped up. It does affect your contrast as well, so if you increase this, it does actually raise the black point, which means that your static contrast is reduced as well. If you decrease this below five, five being the neutral point, then it starts to crush things together. It gives a sort of a more, I guess you could say cinematic look, more of a, just a bit of a deeper look overall, really. So you can just adjust that according to your preferences. There's light tuner, which is grayed out for FPS, but it's available in some of the other presets. There's color vibrance. If you increase this, it will increase your saturation. It doesn't do that by increasing the gamut. It can't do that. What it does is it pulls shades closer to the edge of the gamut, which will oversaturate things. It'll also crush things together, so you lose your shade variety. But some people do like to increase this for a bit of a competitive edge. It sort of just makes things stand out more, I guess. Or you can decrease this if you prefer to decrease the saturation levels. This monitor is naturally quite saturated anyway because it has a wide color gamut. So if you're doing this for actual saturation levels, it might be that you want to decrease this a bit. It's very difficult to get the balance right though. You'll find some elements become undersaturated and some remain quite saturated. It's very difficult to reach a point where everything's just how you'd like it, but you know, you can make these adjustments if you wish. If you decrease this all the way to zero, then things become grayscale, so you lose all of your color. There's brightness, the usual brightness control. There's contrast, sharpness. And that's set to six with the FPS mode. It's five by default. I prefer five, it's more neutral. Six is slightly over sharpened, but you can adjust this according to your own preferences. You'll note that gamma is grayed out with FPS because it makes its own little changes to gamma and you can't change that. You'll also notice that color temperature is grayed out. Again, it just gives quite a cool look to the image and that's a cool tinted look. High white point, certainly did in my unit. Bit green as well, slightly too much green. So you can't rebalance really things. You are restricted if you're using some of these presets. RPG really is more of the same, except that you now have the light tuner 
feature rather than black equalizer. The effect's very similar though. If you increase this, again, you lose contrast, but it lightens up with a bias towards your darker shades or your dark to medium shades. It has a similar effect. If you increase this below zero, so zero is basically disabled, then it starts to make things look very deep, very crushed together. If you like that look, then go for it. You've got that flexibility, color vibrance again. And I've gone through all of the other settings which are available. Again, you can't adjust gamma or color temperature with the RPG setting. Racing game, this is just set in a different way by default to RPG, but you've got the same controls available to you. sRGB, this is an sRGB emulation setting, so it clamps the gamut close to sRGB. You can adjust the brightness, but you can't adjust the gamma or color temperature. MBook, this is supposed to sort of more closely replicate what a MacBook display might show. I don't own MacBooks myself, and I'm not entirely convinced this will look exactly the same as a MacBook. It certainly won't. There are different screen surfaces, different panel technologies, all of that. It's not going to be exactly the same, but this is just another preset. If you want to use it, you like to use it, then you can. There's e-paper. This makes everything grayscale. It also gives a warm look to things, so you might find this more soothing to look at. It sets things a certain way by default. You can change the brightness if you wish. The color temperature is set very much on the warm end, and you can't adjust that. And there's custom, which is my preferred setting. This gives you the light tuner, color vibrance, but importantly, it also allows you to adjust gamma and color temperature. So for gamma, different settings here. One, two, three, four, and five. On my unit, setting this to two, but also setting the light tuner to minus two was optimal. Refer to the test settings, the calibration section of the Vision Review. And for color temperature, there's normal, which is really the, the factory default setting, which gives a high white point to cool look to things. Reddish, which gives a somewhat lower white point, bit of a warmer look to things. And there's user define, which allows you to manually adjust the red, green, and blue color channels. AMA, advanced motion acceleration, again explored in the review. Set that to zero, one, two, or three. My preference goes to one or two, depending on how much overshoot you want or can tolerate. There's blur reduction. All you're gonna see in the video is a bit of flickering, so be aware if you're sensitive to flickering. This is a strobe backlight setting. Reduces the perceived blur due to eye movement. Again, this is explored in the written review in quite some detail, actually. But you can adjust quite a few things with this, like brightness still, although the maximum brightness will be reduced compared to with the setting disabled. And you've got your usual controls there as well. You can use VRR at the same time as blur reduction on this model as well. That's not a problem. And reset color, which I've already gone through, will reset these particular settings or the color part of the menu to the factory defaults. Next up, you've got eye care. So there's BI plus, that's grayed out unless you go to your color mode and then enable it through there. So this uses the light sensor like I was showing you with HDRI before, except you can use it with other presets. And again, you've got light meter and sensor sensitivity, which works in the same way, but it's going to be making adjustments to the image based on your ambient lighting and also the image itself. I didn't really much like those adjustments, to be honest. It kind of messes up the gamma. The color temperature wasn't always what I'd like. The brightness wasn't always what I'd like either. Sometimes I found it a bit brighter than I'd like. Actually, sometimes I found it a bit dimmer. I just prefer manually controlling my brightness or at least I do think it would be much nicer if they would allow you to change the brightness a bit according to your own preferences, maybe set a maximum and a minimum or something like that, but they don't give you that kind of control, so it just makes the adjustments that it's decided it wants to make. And everyone has their own preferences, their own brightness sensitivity, so I think that's far too restrictive. But in terms of the brightness adjustments, it certainly was more active for my unit and in my testing than under HDR with the HDRI settings. There are low blue light settings, so zero is disabled, and you can have an increasing effect all the way up to 20. This works well. As usual for BenQ monitors, it is well balanced, and that is to say that it doesn't have this sort of clear green tint, which some models have and your eyes won't adjust to completely. It does mean that the contrast is reduced because of this rebalancing of the color channels, the careful rebalancing, but it is visually nicer and really Reduced contrast isn't a bad thing when it comes to viewing comfort anyway, so that's not really a problem. And it gives a much warmer look to the image. It decreases blue light output, so some people will find this more relaxing on the eyes. Next up, you've got color weakness. This is for people who have color blindness or restricted color vision. So you can adjust how the monitor displays red shades 
to really exaggerate them. And you can do the same with green. So that's with the red filter and the green filter, respectively. So it really just biases things towards red or green, depending on the type of color blindness you have or issue you have with your color vision that could help you. The next feature is quite an interesting one, actually kind of like this feature in some ways, adjust by duration. What this will do is it will progressively make the image warmer. So it'll give you a progressively lower white point the longer the monitor's been switched on. And if I switch this on in the morning, by the evening, my monitor will be basically in a low blue light state. It'll have a much warmer color temperature. The issue is that if your monitor goes into standby or it's turned off, then it will reset the countdown timer. So you do have to actually have the monitor on all day for this to be useful in that way. But even if you're just using the monitor for a few hours, it will slightly adjust your color temperature. And if you like that kind of thing, then that's what the setting can do for you. You've got audio, which I've been through already. You've got your microphone settings and your speaker settings. So the audio modes, which I showed you when I was using the remote earlier, and you can change the volume here and you can mute the integrated speakers or anything connected to the 3.5 millimeter jack if you're using that. There's then lighting. So there's a lighting feature at the back of the monitor. I'm just gonna dim the lighting and show you this. If I turn this on, you might be able to see a very, very gentle glow around the monitor. It will be a little bit stronger if it's a bit closer to the wall. So just so I can reach everything, I've got it a little bit further from the wall at the moment. But honestly, it's not particularly bright. You generally don't notice it from the front. From the back, however, you can see these little sort of diagonal stripes. There are some on the other side as well. You can change the color of those stripes, pretty self-explanatory. I'm not gonna show you all of these in action because it's a little bit of a pain to go around the back of the monitor. Well, I'll show you blue because that'll be very distinctive from what I was showing you before. I'm sure many of you are aware of what different colors look like though and can use your imagination to fill in the gaps here. Oh, go on, I'll show you green as well. Although to be honest, it looks completely different on the camera. It'll depend on your screen anyway, so you won't be able to appreciate exactly what this looks like in person. But those are the options. You can't customize it further in terms of color. There are also effects. So single's just static. There's breathe, which will just pulse a little bit. Very subtle. You probably couldn't even see that properly. There's spectrum, which will cycle various different colors. Of course, if like me and like most people, you have your monitor up against a wall, you won't be able to appreciate this anyway because you can't really see it from the front. So it's just cycling various different colors quite slowly there. Countdown, I'm not sure what that does. I haven't actually used this, but it seems to illuminate different sections. I don't know if you can see that different sections and I guess they'll all light up when it reaches the desired point. So you can set that to 60 seconds, 30 seconds, 120 or infinite. I'll go on then, I'll set it to 30 seconds and I'll see what it does after 30 seconds. My assumption was correct. Now they're all illuminated. So before it was illuminating top left, top right, bottom right, bottom left, etc. Now they're all illuminated after 30 seconds. Very exciting stuff. For further gimmickry, there is Morse code. So that allows them to spell out different words in Morse code. So there's win, go, love, peace, and SOS. Yeah. So I think this one's appropriate. And there's scenario. So you can have different colors. In fact, you can't change the color. I didn't even realize that, but it just means that the lights will indicate what scenario you're running. So game, cinema, or standard will be orange, light blue, and green respectively. The system, OSD settings, can change the language that the OSD is displayed in. Display time, so how long after the last button press before the OSD automatically disappears. But you can get rid of the OSD by just pressing back a few times, so that's left with the joystick or left with your controller. Auto power off, quite useful feature actually. When the monitor loses its signal, so it enters the low power state, after 10 minutes, it will turn off as if you press the power button 20 minutes or 30 minutes. LED indicator, so you can enable or disable that. As I said, you can't really see it from a normal viewing position anyway, but if it's annoying you, then you can disable it. Display mode, 
So these are some scaling settings which are available if you're running a non-native resolution. So I'm using the native resolution now, so these are greyed out. I've switched on over to the 2560 by 1440 WQHD or 1440p resolution. You'll see that also listed on the monitor. So I've now got full and one-to-one -one. aspect isn't available unless you're running a different aspect ratio with your resolution. So this is a 16 by 9 monitor and it's a 16 by 9 resolution, so there's no aspect setting. But what full will do is it will use all of the pixels called for in the source resolution. So it will fill up the screen completely. Aspect will respect the aspect ratio of the resolution. You know, if that's applicable, so you're running a resolution with a different aspect ratio to 16 by 9, the full setting will still use all of the pixels. The aspect setting will use as many pixels as it can, but will avoid distorting the image in that way, or stretching it. And there's one-to-one, -one, and that's a pixel mapping feature. So it displays the image in the middle of the screen with a black border around it for the rest of the pixels. So it's completely undistorted 2560 by 1440 in the middle of the screen obviously not using up all of the screen space, and how much of the screen space is taken up will obviously depend on the resolution you're running. Next, you've got RGB PC range. This isn't specifically for PCs, although they call it RGB PC range. This allows you to change to a full or limited range RGB signal. So if your system is requiring a certain signal and it's not looking right, then have a play with this. So 0 to 255 is full range RGB, 16 to 235 is limited range RGB. Auto detect should look at what the system needs. And most of the time that will be full range, 0 to 255, and it should automatically change it for you. If your system needs a limited range signal, and Nintendo Switches, for example, they prefer limited range signals from what I understand, then it should switch to limited range. But if not, you can manually select it. HDMI CEC, specific feature which you can turn on. This is usually actually something which TVs have but monitors don't. So I will admit that as a monitor review it's something I don't really know an awful lot about and I rarely think about, but as I understand it, it allows you to use a single remote to control various different devices. So I assume that would mean you can use a different remote to control this monitor and your other devices at the same time. Information, which just some information about the monitor, as you might expect. So the input, current resolution, optimum resolution, so it shows you the resolution and refresh rate whether HDR is on or off, and the model name, EX3210U, just in case you forget. And this reset all, which will reset everything to the factory defaults. So that's really all there is to the OSD on-screen display menu system of the BenQ EX3210U. Be sure to check out the full review on PCMonitors.info. There's a link to that in the description of the video, alongside information about how you can support the work that we do. Also be aware that liking the video, subscribing to the channel if you haven't already, is a nice way of showing your support.